Hey T heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. It's my absolute pleasure today to have a chat with Marek, the craftsman who made the most precious Gong Fu item in my life. And you know, the, the hearth of our home, the center of our home, this incredible Gong Fu tea table. I've done a whole video about the story behind this uh, Gong Fu table and how it works. I'll put a link in the description below. And of course, when we shot that video, when I shot that video, I really wanted to have a tea session with Marek to discuss you know, the making of this table, but due to COVID travel restrictions, that was not possible. And we've been trying to make it happen, but it just hasn't happened. So I thought, let's have a virtual interview so that you can meet the man behind this table. As I said, the most precious uh, Gong Fu uh, piece of kit in my life. So welcome, Marek. It's nice to see you. How are you? Hello, Don. I'm okay. Thank you. Uh, first and foremost, Thank you so much for invitation uh, for this chat. I'm sorry that I couldn't get to you by myself, but as you mentioned, there's uh, regulations now which doesn't allow yeah. me to do so. Anyway, okay. uh, anyway, I'm so happy to be here with you to discuss some insights about the work which was behind this Gong Fu tea table. And uh, yes, I'm just ready to help you with anything you would like to hear from me, how that all was going on. And well, let's, let's start with just a, a little bit about your background. How long have you been making uh, tables for, furniture for, and resin tables? Uh, I'm doing uh, resin uh, tables for like just over three years, maybe now, professionally. Before I was playing uh, with it in my garage, when I saw things like coming together and uh, uh, I can create something pretty nice, <laughs> I was thinking maybe I would just add that to some offer which I uh, which I do for the clients. Yeah, well, you're being very modest because I actually vetted lots and lots of uh, furniture makers and resin table makers in the creation or in the research to try and find a craftsman to make this table. And the backstory of it, for those of you who don't know, is I've been searching for a Gong Fu table for over 15 years. I didn't find any designs that I liked. I found them far too traditional or just, just not to my liking in terms of the look. Um, and so eventually I gave up in 2019 and thought, you know what, I'm gonna make my own or I'm gonna try to get somebody to make my own. So I vetted lots and lots of people online, lots of websites, um, and we made a shortlist, Celine and I, and we you know, made a shortlist of I think about five people and then we reached out to them. Um, quite a few came back to us, um, but uh, we felt that the sort of uh, communication between us was the best. And then you came over to, to the UK to have a tea session, which was a very good move because sharing tea is one of the best ways to, to get business done, as you know. So tell me a little bit about your experience with tea prior to us reaching out to you. What was your relationship with tea? I mean, I won't lie. I didn't have much experience with tea on the Gong Fu tea level. Once you told me that, uh, when you contacted me, uh, that there's something like this ceremony existing, I was like uh, surprised a lot by this. Uh, afterwards, after our first meeting, I was doing the research, but before I was just treating tea like one of the drinks I'm using every day, just to get warmer in the winter, you know. Did it surprise you that, that people out there might want a standalone, um, you know, table, a centerpiece for, for their tea? First thing which stunned me when I walked into your shop is it was like tea shop. I was thinking like, I didn't know something like this, like this existing, you know? So before I started chatting with you when I walked in, because you've been busy, I remember that uh, very well that day. Yeah, I was like, we were looking around for all those types of teas hanging on the on the shelves of your shop. I was like, wow, well, <laughs> well, what is it going to be like talking with you? You know, I was I was stressed, but uh, finally I met you and we came uh, to have that tea. I never forget. So yes, I was I was very I was soaking all the information from you 
trying to find out what, uh, uh, how is it look like, how it is to to go through that ceremony, uh, where where that came from, and all those. So yeah, I do remember it very well. You were very uh, interested. You were asking lots of questions. And I think that you had like an interest in Japanese culture and, and, and Eastern culture as well. Um, and it just felt like a good fit um, for us to, to move forwards. But it was a long journey. I think you'll agree, Marek. It was much longer than you thought it would take, right? <laughs> it was, it was uh, at the beginning, I was like um, approaching that project as normal tea table, obviously, because the process is to to pass the slab as as uh, usually. But later on, obviously, all the work started, like drainage, uh, drainage system, gradient, bucket, and all that stuff. And it was long journey because I was trying to to be very uh, into detail. And try to, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, try to please you as much as I could because. Well, I mean, you know, I appreciated that. That was the whole thing: is, is the attention to detail. And as you said, one of the difficulties, I guess, for you was trying to make the table look as flat and feel as flat as possible, but still give adequate drainage. You can see here, for those of you who didn't see that other video, that this table drains beautifully no matter where you pour from. Um, but was that one of the biggest challenges for you, is trying to get that gradient and that drainage? Of course. Uh, the thing is that uh, my first thought was, would you like to have a sink, some sort of sink uh, as a table, you know? I was thinking, no, that cannot be, it cannot be this way. Uh, and we spoke about it, and as you just mentioned, it had to be, it, it, the gradient had to be done so the water could go down the hole in the table, but it still has to be quite modest to to look, to use not maybe for the gong fu session, just to, yeah. to put a piece of newspaper on it or something. So tell me about the process to make that happen. How, how did you, because I guess that's not something that was like commonly done in tables, right? So you had to devise a method for making a very beautiful sloping gradient, then with this this sort of lip here to sort of capture and, and collar the, the water. Uh, was that, did that take you some time to develop? Did you, did you, you know, how did you come about that? I had to do some sort of flat uh, surface just going around the edges of the slab and after I just marked that uh, border where I left that flat uh, space, I just started to marking uh, the steps which slowly coming into that hole. So you, so you started by making steps, like actual steps. And I remember you sending me pictures of all of these steps going in. And then you had to then smooth it out just sort of with, uh, with different grades of, of sanding, I guess. So how long do you think the actual process of making the grade, just the making of the gradient uh, takes you? Just to make the steps, it takes about a couple of days because I just don't want to go whole day around it. Yeah. I'm just making, I'm just doing this in terms to, to not damage the slab because it's very yeah well that's one of the things isn't it it's a it's a unique one piece of wood so you only get one chance at doing it properly yeah so you've got to take your time yeah so two days to do the 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 steps and then and then the actual sort of smoothing it and getting it down to just a smooth gradient like this how long does that take i mean that that would take just another couple of days because right. green I'm, I'm grinding it from the very thick paper because those steps are not easy to smooth down. Yeah. Especially because uh, when you have hard wood, it's it's not uh, that easy to to grind to grind and connect those steps together. Yeah. Yeah. So they yeah. will look fluent, and afterwards you have to grind 
that uh, hardest paper to the to the most finest paper. Yeah, so different grades see, down to yeah. Uh, until you won't see any. any well, it is remarkable. Like you cannot see anything like there's I, I i saw the pictures and i i must confess when you showed me the pictures of all the steps i was like oh i hope it looks smooth by the end of it because it was very rough but i mean just remarkable it's like flawless you can't see any like and it just looks continuous you know there's no like little bumps going down so i mean it, it is uh I, I was so happy when i saw it moving on to the probably the, the biggest challenge, well, the, t the challenge that took us the longest time to uh, solve the heat resistance. So the, uh, the marks uh, that we kept on testing with porcelain cups and porcelain cups, I mean, the amount of tests with porcelain cups that you and I must have done and the, the amount of samples of different materials. Um, if you want to find out more about that, then go check out our other video. But just, I want to hear it from your perspective how frustrated were you when you had pretty much a, a finished table apart from the final coat, but it was looking like at some point it wasn't going to happen? Did you feel like you were losing hope at any point? I did. Uh, I was losing hope. And you know that we've been uh, trying so many different varnishes because the resin itself, it's not uh, resistant, heat resistant for it. We've been hoping some of the varnish as well but uh, not for the cups used for the tea because yeah. this is porcelana uh, it the heat goes through porcelana so much and it gives that the cup it gives the heat away and uh, obviously once you put the cup on the surface that surface will <laughs> absorb that heat you must have hated you must have hated me Marek, at that point because i remember you kept on saying to me but can't it be like thicker mugs i was like no it has to be this thin porcelain and it cannot leave any mark. <laughs> and you must have been like, ah. We, we, had, we had one point, do you, do you remember? We had one point when we brought that uh, stuff from USA. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, we tried that and it was heat resistant, kind of. Only the, it wasn't like the, the surface wasn't like the glass. Only no, it was, it yeah. Was very, uh, yeah, it was textured, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so just to let people know, I, we found a, a company in the US that, that claimed that their, 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 their surface was heat resistant up to a crazy temperature. We bought it in at a crazy cost, but anyway. And, and yeah, it, it was heat resistant, although it still did. If I remember, it still did leave a mark. But yeah, it had that sort of matte frosted feel and i was just like i can't i want like this glassy feel to it it was a it was a major major stress point i mean i remember our conversations just becoming more and more like desperate but you managed to find the 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 solution and uh and uh, we're not going to go too much into that solution but the the point being that it may leave some marks, but once you pour hot water, they disappear. And it's actually one of the most lovely little magic tricks, I think, because you just pour the water and they, they pop away. But not just that, this is something that I have fallen absolutely in love with, with this table, even more from compared with when I did that first video. It gives the table like a padded feel. It feels like, and at the beginning I was a bit worried because it feels like when you put your nail on it, it feels like it's a little bit bouncy. You know, it's got a little bounce to it. It's got, it's, it's almost like a padded, like a, like got a gel padding. And at the beginning I was a bit sort of scared to clunk things down on it because I was worried about it. But now I know that it, it's fine. It, it all, you know, it, it, it doesn't leave marks and, and any heat marks get um, uh, eradicated with hot water. But now it's just the biggest joy because you put cups down and it almost has like a, a suspension feel to it. It's almost, it doesn't have that really hard click clack sound of like putting things on hard wood. It sort of softens it and it just makes, it's like it makes the teaware, a, uh, sorry, the table a step up because that padded feeling is just so pleasurable. And people who've come here, when they feed it, they go, oh, it feels like almost got a little bit of a bounce to it. Uh, do you know what I mean? Exactly. Oh, it has to have this flexibility 
to just uh, kind of uh, regenerate itself from the marks. So that's, yeah. that's the reason of it. And give you confidence that you can throw any keys on it and you don't worry about the surface. So Yeah. No, it is a it's it's a remarkable find, and and when we when when you discovered that uh, the properties of that material, uh, it was a, a, a for both of us, but especially for you, probably a huge <laughs> sigh of relief that this was actually possible. Um, let's talk about after the video uh, that I released. Um, I can't remember a few quite a few months ago. Um, I know you've been quite busy. Um, how many Gong Fu tables have you have you? Are you working on or have you finished? I mean, uh, I have finished five of them so far, doing another two. And uh, I even managed to do one lovely side table, uh, which I have to mention, uh, one for one of the viewers of your channel. So it's well, a, a, that... is it a side table that matches a Gong Fu table or is it a separate side table? Oh, that was just standard side table. Okay. Like so good, because I want to be the first person to have the side table that matches the Gong Fu table. <laughs> I'm going to make that happen. Um, so seven Gong Fu tables plus a side table. We're going to show some pictures of the beautiful work that you've been doing. And I'm just so happy that, that there are tea heads out there that are going to be experiencing this, uh, um, this, uh, this joy that I that I have the privilege of experiencing. So you out there can see some of the work that Marek's been doing. How has that been going? How, how have your, because um, I've been leaving you to your devices, this is your project now. So how has it been going in terms of the communication with the, the tea, tea head community? Um, and have you been surprised by their sort of passion and, and creativity around, uh, around their Gong Fu table? Uh, first, uh, I was surprised from the response uh, after the video you released. So I just want to say great thank you for all of uh, this. Uh, I don't want to say customers now because they are more like my, I feel more like the friends of mine. Yeah, because it is a very personal process, right? This uh, creating this Gong Fu table, you know, choosing the wood and, and you've found some amazing wood out there and then choosing the color of the resin and where the drainage goes and how, you know, how the seating is going to be arranged, the height, you know, there's a lot of personalization here. Am I right in thinking that some people provided their own wood? Is that correct? And no, no, I, I found all the wood for... for, okay. for them, I thought so. you said there was somebody who had some wood that was under the sea or something. Oh, yes, true. Sorry. This is the project which is freezed now because the um, the customer is, uh, I just want to mention name. Yeah. <laughs> the customer is from Ukraine and uh, okay. I already did one table for him. I already did one table for him and we, he came out to pick it up by himself. Unfortunately, he traveled with this uh, table back home and eventually a day later when he picked up the table from my house all the things in yeah. the Ukraine have started right so okay. I hope he's okay but I don't have any contact with him at the moment I uh, have I have that piece of wood which apparently is a few hundred years old which is part of the a ship which was lying somewhere deep on the, on wow. the sea, in the sea. So I was very excited to start on, on this one as well, but uh, unfortunately we cannot carry on at the moment with, with this project. Uh, maybe, I hope, I hope one day we will, because that will mean that the things are yeah, yeah, exactly. We all, we all hope for that. Um, but tell me a little bit about some of your projects then. Uh, you know, some things that are unique or anything that has surprised you about the sort of tea community and their, their love of tea. Meeting all those uh, people on video chats allowed me to see interiors of the <laughs> tea rooms. <laughs> and I was I was stunned by the amount of teaware and different types of tea <laughs> stored in those stored in those cabinets. 
I was like, wow, <laughs> is it only the room predicted for the tea or something? You know, I was, I was totally, totally surprised and imp impressed by that. And uh, afterwards, uh, ev uh, every one of them was uh, telling me their love into tea, how they how they spend their day, how they start the day. Most most of people, I was surprised that most of people enjoy the tea in the morning. Like I was thinking, it's more like afternoon ceremony when you like get dressed after work or something. Yeah. But People just straight away start the day from the tea. When the sun rises, people relax. Every waking hour, Marek, every waking hour is exactly. tea time. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's. Uh, I tell you one thing. When you have a tea table, um, for anybody who's interested in having a tea table, I should just say, um, if you think you're going to love it, you're going to love it five times as much because, because it just it transforms your home. Uh, I, I've said this to you, I've said this, you know, on camera before, but this now, this table is where I spend most of my day. And whenever anybody comes around to our place, without even asking, they will gravitate to the table. It's almost like tea sessions just happen naturally because everyone just wants to, it's like the new, the new fireplace, you know? It's sort of like everyone wants to sit around the fire, no, everyone wants to sit around the table, um, it's, it's totally transformative um, and, uh, and amazing for conversations. I remember you saying to me, uh, isn't it true that somebody's looking to maybe use it as part of their therapy, is that correct? Exactly, I, had the, I have the customer from USA who is doing the uh, mental therapist, therapy, as far as I remember it properly. Yeah. And yes, she is already thinking to grab another one to use because this one, this one was for the house, for the mm -hmm. home, for, for for the private yeah. purposes. And uh, next one might be for the for the therapy. I'm telling you, there's a market there, Marek. There's a market there. There's something about the tea table. I mean, we all, anybody who loves tea knows that sharing tea is one of the best way to build relationships and have good conversation. But the tea table just solidifies it, just sort of sitting around a tea table. You might, you might end up like having to make lots of these for therapists uh, rooms in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I don't mind, but uh, yes, I have to say that uh, there's something different about it's, I don't, I don't even think about the, the, about this like a table, you know, because uh, there's so much around that Kung Fu ceremony that you don't treat it as a furniture. You, I cannot even uh, express it <clears throat> in words, but uh, it's definitely more, more than just a piece of furniture. People just love it, can't wait to receive it. Yeah. And uh, when they see pictures, they, I can see how they are excited to wait for it. Yeah. Uh, I just have to say that uh, uh, the process uh, of making it, it's longer than I thought so. I was very brave telling that it will take four, six weeks. I have to correct myself now and please be prepared for 8 to 12 weeks. But anybody who has to wait 10, 12 weeks, remember, I had to wait nearly two years, okay? <laughs> so, 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 you know, patience, uh, um, expectation is a pleasure to be enjoyed just as much as the actual receiving of it. And also, um, I see that you're doing different things. You know, you're playing with different, you know, ideas with the legs. Am, am I right in thinking you're making some wooden legs as well? Yes, I have to say I was very happy <laughs> when uh, two customers asked me for wooden legs and bucket and asked me if, if it's possible. I said, I'm not sure, but I want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the beauty of this process is, you know, every tea head, every tea person, every person who's, who, who's going to come to you is probably going to add a little bit of something and, and slowly you're going you're gonna to develop, you know, different styles and different, you know, uh, ways of, of, of producing that's hopefully going to mean that you have more breadth and more options. Um, I love my legs. I love, you know, I'm very happy with the, way, with, with the, that, the bucket and, and everyone always asks, where does the water go? And they look and they can't 
can't see anything, which is exactly what we wanted, the sort of invisible bucket. Um, wait until you see the wooden one. All right, you're going to make me jealous. I know, and I'm going to want another one. I know, I know, I know already. I, I, I already have earmarked outside, like mm, maybe a little tea table out there, you know, I, I know. Uh, finally, Marek, um, how, if you could sum up, how has this sort of experience changed your relationship with tea or, 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 or changed uh, uh, the way that you think about tea? I tell you that when I come to your tea, tea shop now, I will come out with some few different types of tea, definitely. You're going to be spending money with us, I'm sure. <laughs> because, because, <laughs> because I was, I'm thinking now that I was, ring, I was drinking wrong tea all my life i have i have this feeling because i can see now how how much how many different types of tea there is it's out there you know and uh, all that ceremony which is like uh, more familiar to me now but still still uh, full of mystery for me i'm i'm still uh, learning about this well, you're in a unique position in that you somehow understand the technical side of the ceremony before really experiencing it, you know, like, uh, you know, as part of your day to day life. More, normally, it's the other way around. You start to explore it and then you become more technical about it. But you've had to do it the other way from the engineering point of view, understanding how it works. Don't worry, I'm sure when we meet in London that you're going to you're going to um, taste some 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 great teas and you're going to go back with a with a with a bag full of uh, of of goodies um so uh, i you know it's it's a pleasure speaking to you uh, always is um i i have to say anybody anybody who wants to um treat themselves to one of Marek's table. Obviously, you need to have the space, although, you know, you can have smaller tables in this um, and you need to have the funds to be able to do it, of course, you know, so it's presumptuous to say that, you know, go out and get a table, of course, it is, you know, it's a special item. Um, but if you are interested, then as I said, if you think you're gonna love it, you're gonna love it five times more. Um, I'll put Marek's details in the description below so you can reach out to him if you wanna jump on a call with him and talk about your ideal gong fu table. Um, I, I, I only have like, like glowing love for this this uh this uh item in my in my collection and i highly highly recommend it thank you so so much merrick uh, i'm sure we're going to be in touch i'm going to talk to you about my side table and maybe a table out there but i don't want to hijack your time i'm sure you've got lots of projects um and uh, and we're going to be working on more collaborations uh moving forwards but thank you so much for joining us Thank you, Todo. It was a pleasure. You know, you can always call me and uh, just ask uh, whatever you need. I will just do my best to help you. <laughs> Be careful what you promise me. Be careful. <laughs> 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 All right, that's it, Tea Heads. Check out our other videos, Taste Our Teas, wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, that's Merrick and I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff on the most beautiful furniture possible. Take care. Hey, Tom, thank you. Cheers. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 bye.